Yo, hello, hello. Welcome back to the elephant in the room. Finally, it's been a while. <laughs> My name is Aaron and in today's video I will continue with the book The Money Game and Beyond. So I'm a little bit sorry that I didn't record a video for the past weeks or months but you know it's been quite busy this summer there's a lot been going on and you know I moved to Dresden now and started the apprenticeship so um, yeah hopefully I have now a little bit more time um, to record new videos about the book The Money Game and Beyond the game that we play on a daily basis um, including myself now <laughs> it's quite funny um, so yeah, let's get back to the book. So let's remember what we talked about in the last video. Um, it was basically about how trade came into existence, how trade evolved um, into this crazy madness that we can see nowadays all around us. Um, because yeah, trade basically creates an imbalance of power. Some have more and some have less. And this incentivizes people to create problems, basically. You know, in the past we had the kings and queens and merchants, the rich people, and then a lot of poor people who were struggling day by day. And guess what? Things didn't change at all. We still have very few, very rich people. And then the majority of um, the people on this planet, on this planet Earth, are struggling to survive, um, are super poor and live under simple conditions. Um, so yeah, that's why we need to <laughs> understand this trade game, um, how it works and how it distorts people's values. So we are just gonna do exactly that now. Um, we are going to look into different products or items that many are familiar with. We are going to check out the new iPhone, the tasty hamburger, yummy chocolate and delicious coffee, shiny jewelry and fashionable clothes. We are all familiar with these, use them on a daily basis. But you know, what's the story behind these products? Like how are they being made? And that's what we're going to learn now. Um, the iPhone is made by Apple, which is a company based in the US, but they are not producing in the US. Why? Because it is way too expensive for Apple. They would have to pay $4.2 billion each year to move their business back to the US. You know, in China, they pay around 2% in taxes for their phones. And in the US that jumps up to 35%. So they outsource the process of producing these iPhones because it's very profitable to do so. You know, every company or pretty much every company is just profit oriented. Um, and um, yeah, that creates problems because how are these phones produced? Many Chinese workers are slaving away in factories where they have to work 12 hours per day and um, do the most bullshit job, like they have to do monotonous, boring work. Um, they could also be um, replaced by machinery, but that's not being done because human labor is still cheaper than buying, installing and operating these machines. So as you can see here in this picture, that's how it looks like. And this is a waste of human potential because you have to think about that. Every human being is capable of solving a new disease, solving cancer or advancing science or whatever, doing research, etc. But these people, they have to slave away. So of course, we should just automate these things. And then another thing are the materials that are in those electronic devices, not just in an iPhone, but also in any other phone or other electrical device. Um, you need tin, for example, and people of all ages work in mining tin under severe adverse conditions. Many die in extracting tin. Um, there's also pollution of the environment going on. As you can see here, children are involved. So there are also a lot of problems um, with that. 
let's continue with food we have a hamburger here as an example um, food is being produced in one place then shipped to another process there shipped to another uh, tribe and then sold there um, it's also a trade frenzy going on um, we also have a book about um, food and how it is also creating such a waste basically the entire food industry is one of waste and unnecessary imports from other tribes tomatoes grown in spain make their way to the us while seafood is transported from japan to germany and yeah i mean if you follow my videos then i showcased a couple times that there is a lot of food thrown away and i try to save that with food sharing but still it's probably millions of tons of food are thrown away on a daily basis worldwide just because this system is not resource efficient but it's cost efficient so that's a big difference you know it would be so much more resource efficient if we just produce food locally um, with or in automated ways using machines and robots to um, harvest these things um, but it's more cost efficient in today's trade-based society to produce apples in um, New Zealand ship them to Germany to produce apples in Chile ship them to Germany I have seen apples from New Zealand and Chile in Germany um, then it's also cheaper or more cost efficient to use people from Morocco for example in farms like um, Spain there's also a documentary about that where they are exploited and they have to yeah work on farms and work under very tough conditions and frequently are overexposed to the sun just to harvest some fruits or vegetables that could much more easily be farmed in automated ways so again if it's monetarily cheaper to grow tomatoes in spain and import them to the us just because workers taxes etc are cheaper there then that is what today's monetary system consumer culture forces them to do ignoring the fact that far more energy and resources are wasted this way than using tomatoes grown in the us using automation and it's also important to understand that the same thing applies for coffee um, there's also a lot of slavery in that industry and it's interesting because at SAP you are allowed to drink as much coffee as you want um, but are you really thinking or questioning okay um, where's the coffee coming from and like yeah where there may be slaves involved so also for chocolate you know but I don't want to say now or I don't want to not eat chocolate anymore I also eat chocolate but it's more about um, explaining okay we have a structural problem right there and this trade frequency that trade problem is what creates all the other problems so we need to make other people aware of that trade problem and not just because if we solve now the um, chocolate or cacao uh, problem then we will still have a ton of other problems that we will also discover in that book um, so yeah I don't want to blame anyone it's just we all have to understand that we are shaped by our environment and I don't drink coffee but I do eat chocolate and <laughs> yeah I mean what I'm gonna do I um, cannot change the structural problem by myself this is something that we have to do as a society and yeah that's the um, tricky thing you know <laughs> so in this picture we can see yeah like little children being enslaved having to work in a cacao harvest um, farm even animals are um, like exploited or <laughs> there's a palm kivet and you know because since companies can advertise and um, like wake up or call yeah i think wake up desires from people that they might would have never had um, a funny thing happened because um, there's a special kind of coffee where these animals eat coffee beans and then they shit them out and then it's supposed to be that very special coffee but this is just like what the fuck this is completely distorted um, so even animals have to suffer because of our trade-based society um, 
This value distortion of this shiny or special coffee from that special animal, um, we can also see that value distortion in jewelry. Um, there are two big points here. The first one is about how we use a resource and if we look into how gold is being used, then we will discover that 10% is for the industry, 40% for investments and 50% for jewelry. In other words, we um, use gold in a completely useless way um, with 50%, like people just wear it as a ring or whatever, as a bracelet. Um, just to what to show off or to be fancy or whatever and then 50% is used in investments just to speculate basically and then only 10% of gold is being used in the industry for actual yeah, purposes. Um, so that also means that if we add those 40% of the investments and 50% of the jewelry of gold then we will have an abundance of gold basically but in our trade-based society it is more profitable to use it in investments and use it in jewelry completely wasteful i'd say so and that was also the second point the other example would be diamonds so you know in order to get diamonds you have to dig into the ground deep into the ground and extract them and that is a quite a complicated process and you might get only very few diamonds but since we have science and technology we can also produce um, diamonds in the lab um, it's way more efficient but guess what do people use that as a jewelry no they are not using that because they want to have the natural diamonds so this is also just a value distortion right there and what's unfortunate or also sad is um, for science because if you dig out um, these diamonds from deep under the ground my, some of them might also have some impurities like some um, dirt in them and this is very interesting for science because you can learn about the earth's history but what is being done these impurities are basically washed away because people want to have the fancy the shiny um, diamond just for their bracelet or for their ring so yes basically this illustrates yet another example of the highly distorted values of consumers of our consumer culture and now um, if you remember the lamborghini and the other car um, from the beginning of this book the lamborghini is worth 400,000 us dollars um, and the other car is worth 10,000 us dollars but why is that? Because of the completely value distortion of um, today's people. Um, it's not that the Lamborghini is that much better than the car. Yes, it might be faster um, and also has or is made out of different materials. But you can just drive also with the Lamborghini from A to B, like with the other car. So this is just completely distorted. So that Lamborghini is basically a vehicular jewelry. And the same applies for the painting from the beginning, which is worth supposedly $197 million, um, which is equivalent to like 1000 villas in today's world. But like, this is just, I mean, I don't say anything anymore. How the hell does this relate to the world's resources? How is it even possible that such a resource, a painting that has already been replicated billions of times in digital and other forms, evolve and retain such a huge artificial values? The answer mirrors the jewelry concept. Trade has gone mad. That cannot be overstated and this trade disconnect becomes even crazier as value is more and more reflected in currencies than in actual resources. So we just live in a primitive culture um, that puts artificial values above human concerns or environmental concerns and it's just completely fucked up. To say it like it is or as it is, then you have to say this is completely fucked up. 
and um, of course also the diamond industry enslaves people of all ages still exerts a huge toll on the environment and has killed many people all for the sake of trade the same goes for perhaps every aspect of the jewelry industry and industry that has no real value beyond a cultural norm created and empowered by currency and the monetary or the trade system the trade game then let's continue with clothes and fashion i want to go over this a little bit faster i can check out my um little um sheet where it says made in bangladesh um also here we have um, a completely distorted um, system i'd say you know we produce cotton in one tribe ship it then to bangladesh for example ship it then back to the us or to um, germany and um, after we wear it and throw it away then it might end up in africa or in other tribes just for the machine to like continue to consume because that's what our system is based on on consumption like you have to consume <clears throat> And that's why we have all these fashion trends you know every year there's another fashion trend and um, yeah they want you to have the latest things and the things that you bought last year are not cool anymore so you have to buy the new things so you have to consume the new things then um, of course this is also an interesting um, thing because a cloth like a, a t-shirt or a, a dress which is produced for around 90 cents or 60 cents is then um, sold in tribes like Germany or the USA for $85 or for way more than it is um, being produced and the people who actually manufacture these clothes they get paid very poor of course because the companies like H&M, Zara, Giorgio Armani whatever they make a lot of profit out of that there's also this documentary, um, you can check it out and learn more about this industry. So in one big and important example that was not on our list yet is used all over is oil. Basically the worldwide economy is running on oil. So many products are made out of oil. For example plastic dishes, shower gel, bath mats, toothpaste, toothbrushes, refrigerators and so much more. And um, it's quite interesting because for oil to be made or to exist um, it's quite a complex process and takes millions of years and a lot of pressure and um, yeah it's an interesting resource because we can do so many things with it but what happened when people discovered oil they just used it to make the most profit out of it so they weren't really thinking okay how can we use this resource in a sane way um, and what happens if we use too much of that oil if we burn too many fossil fuels maybe that has negative consequences on the climate you know people just didn't give a fuck because they were putting profit above everything else because that's how our um, trade-based system incentivizes people to do um so yeah basically then cars came and <laughs> now we have this mess all around us with so many cars with a heating climate with um a lot of pollution because of all the plastic um mess uh, you know there are plastic garbages in the ocean um just because of this trade system so let's think about in a trade free world or where trade is less a thing um, and when a needed resource is discovered then perhaps more time and investigation would be spent on thinking about how that resource could be managed most appropriately both for our use and the total environmental impact but in a trade world such a resource is an opportunity to make wealth to make money so not much thought is put into how it is going to be used or the consequences so keep that in mind too because it's another very important aspect here are some more examples of what it means to discover such a resource in a money game world in a trade world 
More fuel means more cars, more cars means more fuel and this fuels a corresponding increase in the use of other resources for building cars, transporting them etc. And the same applies for making plastics or other stuff. As the more plastic products you make from oil, the more you increase the demand for oil to make even more plastic products. Another example is tribe A has oil but tribe B does not. Then tribe A enjoys a big advantage in the world of trade and it can exercise additional powers. This leads to conflicts, wars, loss of other resources during conflict, many dead people, destruction of the environment, etc. And the last example is about how relatively few people or companies or states control a resource so the price of oil does not reflect how much oil um, costs to produce or its needs, its demand, but instead is filtered by those who get their hands on it first. And they can say, okay, they can influence the price. They can say, okay, we want to higher the price of oil now to make more profits uh, or lower it to increase the consumption of oil. Um, yeah, that's what it's about here. Um, so yeah, let's um, continue um, and let's think about we covered the most dominant and biggest markets that we have nowadays, you know. These examples are about food, textiles, electronics, rare materials like gold and diamonds and oil. Given that the largest trades are significantly in this state of enslaving people and causing massive waste of resources and energy, imagine the rest. And here are some more examples. Um, organ transplant, surrogate mothers, pornography and prostitution. If you look into these um, trades, you will see that there's a lot of exploitation and um, coercion and many problems. Um, here are some more examples um, and basically the point here is the trade world is no longer about giving something useful to you so that you can give me back something useful. The emergence of the monetary system caused it to morph long ago into a crazy game of exploitation for both resources and humans or other animals for profit. If it is cheaper or more profitable to do something that's very likely how it will be done. It doesn't matter if we have to move everything around the whole planet with raw materials grown or mined one corner, the production facilities in another or whether it harms our own people, the rest of life on the planet or the global environment. Today cost efficient only means money efficient, not resource or energy efficient. Keep that in mind. And this is about even if you want to play with the rules of the money game or the trade game and if you want to do something that is more profitable for you for example if you have an oil plant and you want to replace it with a renewable energy plant um, you might not be able to do so because it has a lot of consequences <laughs> that would influence a lot of people's lives for example, many people will lose their jobs if you close the extraction plant and since those workers are also consumers, their loss of income will affect many other businesses that depend on the workers buying their products and services. Then there are all of those that rely on my plant's production to fill their jobs in transportation, refining, petrol station, auto mechanics, etc. What about all of the car and truck manufacturers and auto or truck distributorships who still need to sell cars that run on gas? What about all of the other tribes that will suffer if I stop providing oil for their needs? So as you can see in this example, even if you chase profits and want to improve a situation, so it would be um, highly profitable for you and um, benefit the environment, you are not able to do so because of the powerful interlocking interests within the money game that put many roadblocks in the way. So and then this one is about um, how the price of the same device is higher or lower in one tribe or another. This is also about the context of tribes, trade rules, what is cool, needed or wanted at any moment in time and for what tribe. It rarely reflects anything more than that. You can also read more 
um, here. And then this page also raises a very interesting question and um, important topic because how can you quantify nature or biodiversity in the money game? Like how is that possible? What is the monetary value of an entire forest with its vast numbers of plants and other biological life that allow new drugs to be invented, technologies and large quantities of CO2 to be absorbed? What is the price of bees, coral reefs, oceans, polar bears and our ancient rock formations found in nature that are so valuable for science? What is the monetary price of global climate stability? Or that of the world's marine life so yeah I hope you can see and realize that you cannot put a price on these things like it is thought that if natural resources like these were viewed as a stock market they would all be rapidly headed for a crash but of course it's nearly impossible to put a value price on anything at all resources or services as you've seen so the more you think about the money game the less and less sense it makes so and this is almost the last page of the chapter um, where it's about, you know, remember the distorted values of um, those kings and queens. Um, they wanted to have a lion from Africa, etc. Um, but these desires or wants are happening on a daily basis in this trade world that we're living in. Um, but we have to remember that these uh, kings and people of today are not really assholes. They are just playing the darn game and reflecting the twisted values of the culture in which they were born. Perfectly adapted to the system that instilled those values into them and the system couldn't be happier. So what are the core issues of trade? Currency no longer represents resources nor does it reflect services or even people's skills. Trade dramatically changed people's values, causing most people to want more and more stuff and more silly ones. It nurtures intense competition over cooperation. It naturally exploits the environment, animals, people and nature. It is fully unsustainable as it creates infinite demand on a finite planet. It elevates profit motive over human values or the environment. It produces vast amounts of waste as lots of stuff never gets used and even more is dismissively thrown away. It redefines the value of resources, making them less valuable than they are or more depending on trends, demand and profit. It encourages artificial scarcity. If people would agree that we need to make better batteries starting tomorrow, they could easily make batteries much better, cheaper and helpful for all but the world of trade won't allow them to do that. Batteries like renewable energies and other tech or materials are mainly scarce and expensive because of how things are ruled today, not because we can't make them more abundant, cheaper and eco-friendly. As long as you can create currency which in turn creates money, debt, you have the power to continually consume more and more. And as you make more money available to people as debt within such a system, you may perhaps forever live in debt. And then also trade always requires people to work to be part of the trade system, but this is challenged with the advent of sophisticated machinery that can already automate nearly all jobs, but it's still not being done in today's trade world. Trade always requires consumers and that fuels the need to make lots of stuff to keep jobs going. That incentivizes the making of silly, unnecessary and sometimes dangerous goods and jobs and increasingly gives rise to pointless services. Now we see more and more of these pointless services, bullshit jobs all over the world. So some other important key points are money is thought to store value, but the value of resources and services are both culturally created and dependent on current technology resources. Money is thought to be a means of exchange, but today has become more of a means of power. And money is thought of a measure of resources, but it has become anything but that. So the bottom line is, we know it looks as if trade is a really bad thing, but without trade we wouldn't be in the modern world we're in, as trade allowed for the development of societies, new materials, science and technology. 
it appears much more sensible to conclude that people simply didn't have the knowledge and means to do it otherwise, up until 100 or so years ago. But perhaps they could have managed this trade journey better with more careful planning. So of course you can argue trade was a good thing as well because societies developed with trade, um, science and technology could advance with trade. But nowadays in the 21st century, we are now in 2021, it just doesn't make sense anymore. It is outdated and we need to make it obsolete because it also, as we argue all around this book here, um, it creates a lot of problems. So that was it for this video. In the next video we are going to um, talk about systems to organize societies. So let's see what different people um, suggested, what they had um, as an idea to organize a society, or how to change a society. So this is going to be very interesting. We are going to talk about different ideas like communism, socialism, technocracy, um, democracy as well, open source um, and many more. That was it for this video. I hope it was interesting. Um, let's see when I can do the next video. Um, yeah, and I'm just gonna say, <laughs> see you then in the next video. I'm gonna go to bed now and I'm just gonna say as always, take care and much love.